What's up guys? Before we jump into tonight's video, I just want to take a minute and say that the live Q&A session for March is going to happen tomorrow, March 23rd, which is Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you're able to join us live, join us live and we'll have a nice little Q&A. If you can't make it, drop a comment in this video below. All right, so now on with today's topic. Uh, I have had a couple people reach out to me uh, over time and have had questions about how to run a mechanical fuel pump setup such as a waterman or a DSR uh, on either common rail applications or P-pump applications. So I just finished up plumbing the fuel system on Newman's truck, the common rail swap first gen, and I thought it would be a good time to go ahead and showcase exactly how we've done that what it takes to run one on a common rail, and how easy it is to do one on a peak pump motor. So let's take a look at those. So I'm gonna start off here by showing you guys the mechanical fuel pump setup on the common rail. The larger fitting here is the fuel supply. This is coming from the tank. And then the smaller fitting here is the high pressure side going to the filter, which ultimately ends up into the CP3s. We used a dash 10 on the suction side. Uh, you could also use a dash 12. This particular Waterman setup uh, has the fitting set up for a 12, but a 10 is more than sufficient. And then we have it set up with a 10 also on the high pressure side. And then the high pressure side is gonna go down to that filter block there. That filter block is this right here. It's an Earl's 2077. This high pressure line is going to go to the inside of the filter block and then you can plumb this either way and that's why they're labeled in and out so you know exactly what you need to do. And then the outside of this, so the fuel coming from the waterman to the filter head now heading towards the CP3s, now it needs to go to a pressure regulator to regulate that pressure down to about 30, 35 PSI, because if you have any more than that, you could hurt your CP3 pumps. So I will show you the pressure regulator off the truck uh, to make it a little bit better for you to see and where the fuel goes from here. Now this might look a little scary, but it's really not. You can use pressure in and out on either side of this. So the line leaving the filter head will come to one side of the pressure here. And then the other side is gonna be your regulated side. And that is going to go to your CP3s, like it is there, wide into both of our CP3s, or if you just have one CP3, just a single feed. Then you'll have to have a return for the relief pressure side. And so this will have to get plumbed in and teed into your fuel return that returns from your CP3s and the back of the head. So let me show you guys that so that way you make sure you understand that perfectly as well. So this line here is the return off of the lower CP3 and this is the return off of the higher CP3. These Y into a Y fitting here and then this line here runs to the frame rail where there's another Y where that pressure regulator Y's into that and then the fuel return from the back of the head will go and T into that. So a little bit complicated, but as long as you understand the flow path of everything, it's really not that bad. So then from there, you're gonna have your return line that returns to the tank. I always like to return the fuel to the bottom of the sump, uh, as opposed to dumping it in from the top of the fuel cell, uh, just to keep from aerating the fuel. And then of course, always do your main feed from the bottom of the sump as well. But there's a quick rundown on how to plumb a mechanical fuel pump on a common rail. All right, so now let's check out a mechanical pump, or should I say a mechanical fuel pump on a P-pump. So same deal as before, this is a DSR pump, but it does the exact same thing as a Waterman does. You've got your fuel supply coming from the tank on this side, and then high pressure line on this side. High pressure line goes to the same style Earl's 2077 filter head as we ran on the common rail engine. But from there, it just simply goes directly to the injection pump. Uh, the way I did my injection pump is I have, I'm dual feeding 
both of the side ports. I know that some guys dual feed from the front port here and then one or the other over there because the factory pump linkage is all in the way here. Uh, but because I have an air throttle set up, I'm able to dual feed it to the side there. And I believe that to be the best way to do it. Uh, and then as far as for fuel pressure regulation goes, that's all done on the overflow valve side. So basically this is a high speed check ball uh, it's actually back there. <clears throat> and this overflow valve is just wide open. So it's being regulated by the check ball back there. And then the injector return just tees in to where that uh, little brass fitting is there. And then <clears throat> that dash six line goes back to the tank. Uh, this setup here is dependent on RPM, of course, because it's mechanical, but <clears throat> it'll make uh, 10, 15 PSI at idle, and then down track, I'll see about 80 PSI of fuel pressure, uh, which is good for keeping my little P-pump here nice and happy. And then same deal on the fuel return. Uh, you can't really see it here because it's so tucked up in my roll pan, but basically fuel feeds over here, fuel return is over here, returning to the tank, just like the common rail setup. And yes, that is rubber because I do four-wheel drive burnouts like a man. All right, so there you have it. Uh, the mechanical fuel pump on the common rail is a little bit more intimidating just because of having to deal with the pressure regulator. And if you have two pumps, why in in all the returns? Uh, the mechanical stuff is really simple. You just put fuel pressure to that thing and you're done basically. And you just regulate it with that high speed check valve on the overflow side. And then the injector return just tees right into that. But either way, more than capable of you guys can handle this yourself. Uh, nothing scary about it. It's just basic plumbing stuff, and they're super, super reliable. I like a mechanical fuel pump on anything that's uh, a real race truck. Uh, I don't know about street driving them or dragon driving them. I personally wouldn't have any fear doing a dragon drive, but I know they say that you're not supposed to street drive them. But if you have a, a competition vehicle, the mechanical fuel pump setup is the lightest and most reliable setup that you can go with. So that's all I got for this one tonight, guys. Hope you found it helpful. Hope that uh, covered all the questions that all of you guys had on the mechanical lift pumps. So like always, thanks for watching. If you're new here, click that subscribe button and we will catch you on the live feed tomorrow.